Hi everybody and welcome to a new exciting series called PyTorch for audio and music processing. In this series you learn to use PyTorch in the context of audio and music processing tasks. So in this video what I want to do is give you an overview of the course and outline the different things that you'll be learning. But before we get started with those things, the most important thing to cover is the two main technologies that will be the two protagonists of this series. And these, of course, are PyTorch and Torch Audio. I'm quite sure that you're familiar with PyTorch, which is a high-level deep learning library in Python, which is really popular at the moment. Perhaps you're not super familiar with Torch Audio. So what is it? Well, Torch Audio it's an audio processing library for PyTorch, and it's part of the PyTorch environment, if you will. The great thing about Torch Audio is that it takes advantage of GPU acceleration so that it is very, very efficient when transforming audio data. Now, Torch Audio has a lot of different components and functionalities. First of all, you have functionalities to perform input and output with audio data, all sorts of audio data. It also has already audio data sets that you can easily query and download in your PyTorch environment. And then you can also perform data augmentation, all sorts of things like time stretching or pitch shifting. And finally, and probably most importantly, uh, Torch Audio has a lot of native uh, feature extraction facilities that will allow you to extract audio features like spectrograms, melt spectrograms, and MFCCs. And the great thing about this is that all of these um, transformations will happen on GPU, and so they will be very efficient. You may be wondering, why should I care learning PyTorch if I'm already familiar with TensorFlow, for example? Well, there are a bunch of reasons why you should start learning PyTorch, but there is one which is probably the most important one, and it's captured by this chart which I compiled from Google Trends. As you can see, PyTorch has steadily grown over time, and here we capture a period that goes from 2017 up until today, which is May 2021. And as you can see right now, the number of Google searches that we have uh, for TensorFlow and PyTorch are more or less the same. So this means that the popularity of these two frameworks is more or less equal. Here's a little bit more of context why you should start learning PyTorch. This framework is already dominating in academia. If you're reading uh, papers in audio ML, audio deep learning, there's a high chance that the code will be implemented in PyTorch, not in TensorFlow. And at the same time, PyTorch is picking up quite a lot in the industry as well. The great thing about PyTorch is that it's completely open source, but this is also true for TensorFlow. Now, if we look at Torch Audio, the cool thing about it is that it runs audio feature extraction on GPU, and this is very, very efficient. Now, in the Sound of AI channel, we always used, I think, uh, TensorFlow. So this will be the first time that we'll be using PyTorch. So I think like this is going to be really cool for you guys. And also, we've always used um, CPU-driven audio feature extraction specifically using Libroza. So this will also be the first time that you'll be using GPU accelerated audio feature extraction through Torch Audio. So this is a great primer. Now, what are you gonna learn uh, in this series? Well, a bunch of things, but mainly you'll get an overview of PyTorch and Torch Audio and how they work. But then you'll get also like quite practical skills. So you'll be able by the end of this course to uh, build train, evaluate deep learning models in PyTorch and also use those models to make inferences. And of course, there's the whole other side of the coin, which is that of like the audio processing. So you, by the end of this course, you'll be able to load audio data sets with custom PyTorch data sets. And of course, you'll learn more about what this custom PyTorch data sets are throughout the series. And finally, You'll also be able to perform audio feature extraction, like for example, melt spectrograms or MFCCs directly on GPU using Torch Audio. And that will be completely combined or 
uh, in the same environment as your PyTorch uh, application. Finally, you'll also learn how to use CNN architectures for performing sound uh, classification. This is connected to a practical project that we'll be using uh, as an example uh, throughout uh, this series. So what should you expect from this course? Well, if you're familiar with the Sound of AI channel, you know that I really care a lot about theory as much as I care about implementation. But in this series in particular, I will mainly be focused on coding. So there are, there's going to be little to no theory at all because all the stuff that I'll cover here, like deep learning concepts or architectures, as well as like audio features, I've already covered in previous a series quite in detail. So if you're not familiar with this, I'll just refer you back to those series. Now, the other thing that you should expect from this uh, course is kind of like a very practical approach to it because we're going to have one sample project. And as I just mentioned in the previous slide, this project is going to be all about urban sound classification and it will allow us to put into practice all the things that we'll learn about PyTorch and Torch Audio. Now what's urban sound classification as a task? Well this is quite straightforward. So you have some sound that has been captured with a mic for example on the street and then you pass that over to a deep learning model and then the deep learning model tells you uh, what type of sign, sound uh, you have in that registration, that recording, right? So, uh, for example, in this case, uh, we pass this audio file, uh, we, we, we have an inference done by this model, and the sound is classified as, a, as an ambulance or the sound of a siren. Cool. Now, uh, we can think of urban sound classification as a multi-class classification problem because of course we have a bunch of different classes of sounds that different recording can be uh, in, right? And we'll be using a data set which has been extensively used in academia that's called the urban sound at k 8k data set and here, not surprisingly, we have more than 8,000 uh, sound samples from 10 different sound classes. Like for example, we have the sound of a siren, sound of a or dog's barking, and a bunch of other sounds like that. Okay, now, uh, of course, this is not a course for beginners, but rather you should have some prerequisites already fulfilled. So. First of all, you should be an intermediate Python programmer, because of course I'm not going to teach you how to program in Python. And then there are a couple of advisable things. So first, it would be great, but not necessary, if you had a basic understanding of audio machine learning features, and specifically MAL spectrograms and spectrograms. Once again, if you're not familiar with this, this is not really the end of the world, because you'll be able to understand what I'll say most of the time but if you need a refresher or if you really need to dive more into this concept i will refer you back to uh, the series where i covered this in more detail and then the other point that it's very advisable is to be familiar with deep learning uh, in general and specific concepts like uh, loss functions optimization or cnn architecture this kind of stuff again this is not strictly necessary but it's highly advisable given we'll be dealing with uh, deep learning models. All the course material, so code implementations as well as slides, will be stored on my personal GitHub account as is usually the case with my uh, series here on YouTube. Now, who's this series for? Well, for a bunch of different uh, people, really. So machine learning and deep learning engineers who are starting with uh, PyTorch, but also who are very experienced with PyTorch, but don't know much about Torch Audio and want to get started with that. And then this is also great for computer science students or technology students more in general who are interested to uh, deep learning audio and, of course, PyTorch. Then this is also like a series that will work for software engineers and musicians and music technologists. So people who come more from the arts side of things, but who are getting into the technology side also. 
If you have doubts throughout the series and want to get a feedback, of course you can leave comments below the YouTube videos and I highly suggest you to, to do that to help out the Sound of AI channel. But you should also join the Sound of AI Slack community. So this is a community where you have thousands of people who are interested in AI, audio, music processing, generative music, all this kind of stuff. So I highly suggest you to go there and post there your doubts because the community is going to help out a lot. I'll leave you the sign up link in the description box below. So just check that out. Cool. So this was it for the intro to this new series. So what next? What should you expect in the next video? Well, We'll just get started with PyTorch and you'll start building your first deep learning model in PyTorch. I hope you are as excited for this series as I am, like creating it. And I'll see you next time. Cheers for now.